First of the month, all right, today is Wednesday. It's time to retire, transitory. Now this word, transitory, have been used by Jerome Powell and become a very famous word because almost any time this word appear on internet is equivalent to Jerome Powell. So the question is this, he has been saying this for a long while. He's been telling people that this, um, this uh, inflation is transitory and he was very adamant. He was, very, he was just basically telling the same thing repeatedly since September. October and even early November. Now, what have happened then? Now, I can only tell you this because his position as a federal chief now is confirmed, right? So definitely now he has to work on it and make sure that he don't leave a bad name. So that's the reason why to me, it makes a lot of sense that he has to remove this word transitory. And of course, he did in a very, very direct way and he just has no qualms over it, all right? So today we talk about Jerome Powell. Then of course, we talk about Omicron, all right? Omicron is actually a very interesting name because actually a lot of people got confused because everybody thought it's NU, NU, all right? Everybody thought it's NU, but apparently it's all right. It did not go to NU because they skipped NU and they skipped another word, okay? And then they come with this Omicron. I'll share with you more later, so it's pretty interesting. And of course, we have the... Um, currency problem due to the inter uh, due to the interest rate factor. And of course, now one particular country, Turkey, is in serious trouble, all right? And of course, now the fear indicator has dropped all the way from 86 all the way down to 27. We'll talk a lot more today. So today is going to be information tag. Let's begin, all right? Now, before we start this morning, once again, we need to understand our risks, okay? So guys, please understand this. My job is to give you the best market information. Now, many people are coming forward to learn uh, what I have to share every morning. And of course, what they do is that they take down notes and then they proceed to go and trade the market. Now, of course, nothing is 100%. I, I can't guarantee you anything. But I can only tell you that basically, whatever I share is pure technical and you just have to make your own decision. Yeah, so if I say it's a sell today, and I say that, okay, what's the reason for selling? And you will concur with it. And then you do your risk assessment before you sell, meaning that you have to ask yourself how much you're going to trade on it and what's your potential lot size and your risk factor. All these must come from yourself. Then you engage into trading, okay? All right, so hopefully this understand. And of course, at the end of the day, when you accepted my sharing, you have indemnified me, okay? All right, let's continue. So now the so-called jack in the box, okay? The jack in the box right now is the <clears throat> virus, okay? This Omicron virus. And of course, it's freaking Wall Street out. And of course, everybody was stunned. Because all along, everybody thought, okay, we have, the we have the vaccine one, vaccine two, and then we have the booster shots, and the numbers is coming down. So everybody think that, okay, you know, even the, uh, the European countries, they go into big gatherings and they have no problem, yeah. But of course, later on, we know that, right, Germany, uh, UK, there are more than 50,000 people catching the coronavirus within a single day. But of course, again, the market didn't bother, didn't care. It's kind of like, hey, okay, uh, we know the numbers is going up, but the market just simply doesn't bother, right? And then what happened? Of course, now we have the outbreak, yeah? The only thing is this, now this new Omicron is a little bit faster. It spreads faster. It's milder but it's faster. So that is the problem here itself. And of course, our Federal Reserve Chief, Jerome Power, has turned pretty hawkish, okay? So now this is freaking the bull. The bull market will not want a hawkish Federal Reserve, okay? Because when you say hawkish means that they are looking to hike interest rates, they want to promote uh, a interest rate environment, they want to reduce monetary policies, all these will definitely affect the stock market because we have seen the stock market going up and the way it goes up itself, you put the chart side by side, you will see that the amount of money that Federal Reserve put in is equivalent to the stock market going up. So obviously it's a very simple, simple pattern. Shall the Federal Reserve have to reduce the money that's available for the system? So obviously the stock market will come down, right? It's a very simple thing. So now the problem comes here. On the 14th and 15th of December, that is where Federal Reserve will meet up again. And this time around, everybody will watch what Jerome Powell say. Now, the thing is this, the market now is actually looking at 30 billion tapering off instead of 15 billion. So which means that now the market is actually uh, pricing in a, a double tapering speed, all right, to make sure that they can end the tapering by the end of April or March, okay? So that's something that is pretty, pretty scary because 
for stock traders itself, right, they've been enjoying the last 10 years because of the easy monetary policy. So if this is going to be taken from the system, it will be a repeat of what happened in 2018. Now in 2018, there was a point whereby there were a lot of money coming in the system. That's why the stock market went out from 2016 to 2018. But then in 2018, the tapering started to kick in, right? And when the tapering kicked in, my, my God, the stock market went down by almost 10% on the immediate reaction. And of course, that was pretty scary. And the thing is this, the traders are looking down, would there be a possible repeat? So that is whereby I'll cover this more tomorrow on this particular topic. So now the thing is, when we Fair Reserve now confirming his position, is transitory no more. Yes, indeed, it's transitory no more. So now what will be happening now? Look at it. This is the chart that is for time being now. That means that this is for now, okay? Meaning that uh, now we are basically reducing at $15 billion, okay? So if we reduce by $15 billion, okay? Then the logic is that, right, from 80 down to 70, then this... Um, 40 down to 35, okay? That is what is actually happening right now based on 15 billion. Now, of course, if they actually, they actually now do 30 billion, then the question is which one will be affected most? Would it be, a, you know, equivalent? So we don't know, but what will happen is this. That means that the number will jump down. So from here itself, maybe you can see it to 50 billion. And then here, maybe it will down by maybe to 15 you know, something like that. Now, if, if this is going to happen, right, this will basically dwine, uh, end it off by March itself. Means by March, right, we will end the tapering. And then, of course, that's where by interest rate likely will be going higher because interest rate can usually only go up after tapering. But, of course, there are incidents whereby interest rate goes up together while tapering or, I mean, it's ongoing, yeah? So that is possible. It is very possible, okay? But that's a, just an on normality. It's usually the tapering completed, then we have the interest rate because we don't want to have a sudden knee jerk effect on the market. But again, like I say now, Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell has confirmed his position as Federal Chief. I can tell you this, he will work on it. it it's very clear that, you know, I got four years down the road, right? I should be hot now and then after be a better boy in the next two years. You understand my point, right? It, it makes a lot of sense. Don't you agree? For those who agree with me, right, please keep the word agree. Do you agree with me? All right, that I, I say about what Jerome Powell most likely will be doing. If you agree with me, hit the word agree, yeah? I'd love to hear your comments right now. Okay, all right. I see Lou agree. How about the rest? Okay, so we have uh, this uh, Lou, Lou Agree, Terry, Leroy, Anthony, Dennis. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for the support. Eric, thank you. All right, so with that is all right, I'm going to go into this segment whereby I always tell you that, I mean, recap of what I share in the market versus what happened. So yesterday, I did a very scary prediction, okay? What I did was that I tell people that if the Dow Jones is a four, it will come down to one number. And the number I gave specifically, I, I don't know whether you remember this number. The number I gave was 34,592. I gave a specific figure of six, um, 692, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, right, again. I say that if the market is to come down, right, the Dow Jones will come down to 34,000. 692. That means that I was looking at the market to drop by at least 200 points from where we were yesterday. Now, do note the market was already down by about 400 points when we were talking in the during our segment here itself. So, why do I say that itself? Because the technical tells me that. And of course, I did a mathematic for you. And if the selling do go crazy enough, the next two weeks, the market may even drop to 33,540. So, all these are shared during the MAO, right? Remember? Okay, so with that itself, right, what actually happened? Let's take a look. The market really came down lower and triggered 34,591. Oh, it's 591, okay? So it was 591. That means it was 300 points correct. Sorry. Okay, so the thing is, is I forecast the market to go down and the time was 34,845. I forecast it will go down to 34,591. So I was right. And of course, the Dow did go down even lower, okay? Even lower. But the interesting part is this, by the end of the day, it closed somewhere nearby 
to the level that I mentioned, yeah? So this is pretty interesting because uh, basically a lot of people was like telling me, Kel, how do you expect the market to fall? And I think so good, I said that, well, it is supposed to fall. All right, so I was pretty spot on for the Dow, right? If yes, give me a Dow spot on for me, yeah? Now, of course, the other one that I was looking at was crude oil. Now, I've been telling people that to short crude oil for time being already. Although I did say that crude oil will go to $121, but I say it's six months time. And I keep on reminding everybody, I said that no, <clears throat> from now on, uh, sorry, that means about two months ago, when crude oil was trading at about $85, I say that crude oil will go down. And I gave the figure is it will go down to below $70. That was my first uh, forecast back then. Then of course, as well, right? I also, when it came to $70, I say that, okay, if $70 is being done and it's a very big, big uh, sell off here, most likely the market will drop another wave later, later, not immediately. And I did the final computation. I say that the crude oil may drop all the way to $58.20. Now, of course, the question is that when I said that immediately there was some unhappiness, people say that, Cal, this is a bit too crazy, right? How can the crude oil price drop to such a low level to $58.20? I say that it is all very possible. Now, think a little about this. If let's say now the, this uh, Omicron virus and that the, to get the vaccine, it won't be like immediately because we know that the COVID itself, it took about only six, nearly six months before the vaccine get ready. So Omicron itself, right, maybe let's say give it a, the give and take, maybe two months or three months. So this will affect generally the market. And of course, now we are approaching the winter season, which is the festive season. So obviously it's all right, there will be a constraint to deliver. And because of that it's all right, the market can choose another way, it just stops. And when you stop the sub, right, the demand will actually drop. Contrary to what people say, say oh, because it's the season, therefore, there'll be higher demand. Now, that is one way to get it. But from the, now, the way you can see the market is coming down, you can see it doesn't seem to be going that direction. And of course, we have the White House releasing their strategic reserve okay, into the market. I can't, I have to de I can't deny this. Bringing it down to $60 will become a better option. And obviously, it would deflate the inflation. And of course, it will help the economy in general. So that's why I say that mathematically, technically, and of course, fundamentally, there is a good chance for crude oil to go down all the way to 58.20. And of course, crude oil yesterday dropped from $69, dropped all the way down, all the way down to $64. So it's another $5 drop again. And again, many people who were with us as well were pretty happy because we tell them that the crude oil will be going down and they shorted the market and they make money. So this is why I say that every morning, kindly pay attention to what I need to share with you. I may not be right in everything, but as long as you get a few good calls, I'm sure you're going to make money. All right. Thank you once again, Anthony and Louis. All right. Now, the thing is this. Yesterday, we saw the uh, consumer confidence. It came in at 109.5. It's slightly lower than the expectation itself but the market didn't really care because they were all looking at Moderna, looking at this uh, hawkish date, I mean, hawkishness of the Federal Reserve, and of course, the, the, the virus itself. Okay, so of course, today we will have our ADP. So stand by everybody, ADP, yeah? So which means that right now, the ADP numbers, the last one was 571,000. This time around, they're looking at 525,000. But if you look at the numbers, it have been going up since uh, August itself, right? So what do you think will be tonight's ADP? Now, for those who are joining us the first time, it's all right, FYI, once in a while during MAO, I will ask you to guess what is the number for this and that. And of course, if you win, you will get to get some prizes, okay? So today, it's all right, I forgot to put in a thing, but I can tell you what's the, uh, we are giving out as much as the last one was uh, Snowball. So now it will be 6.88 ADA coin. I repeat, it will be 6.88 ADA coin. So everybody now, please key your number. What do you think will be tonight's ADP? Now you have to be precise. You have to be accurate. Yeah, right. That means that it cannot be. You, I only give the winner the 6.8 ADA coin by only when you get it spot on. Okay, exactly. All right. So now you have 30 seconds to think and then write your answer right now. Okay, counting down. 30 seconds. Let's go, right, guys? Okay, 20 sec 10 sec 20 seconds left. Okay, 10, 
nine, eight. Now this is something that we do only, I, I believe that probably in, only in Singapore, TWB students get to play this game because we want you to not only just listen to me, when you can participate. And of course, to reward you is not right. We have, we give out ADA coin. Yeah? ADA coin is Cardano coin. And of course, we're giving out. I think we have given out at least more than 150 to 200 ADA coin over the last six months already to students. Yeah, easily more than that. I think 300, 400. But that's Susan probably. Okay, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, everybody, stop. Okay, now I have my number. My number is 542. Yes, I'm all optimistic this time around. Yeah, 542 jobs is my personal view, okay? So if you guys uh, have other numbers, please key in right now, okay? I'm going to shut it up because that means that you cannot add any more numbers after this, okay? It's only for people who take their initiative to come online, ASAP, to participate. Yep, okay, that's the end. Well, I see a lot of 500 figures, so let's see what happens later today, okay? All right. Now do note, at the same time itself, Jerome Powell will continue to talk uh, to talk, and that is at about uh, two hours after ADP numbers. Sorry, I'm going to change again the timing. But later on at 10 p.m., we will have the ISM manufacturing data. And of course, the data is looking at 61, which is higher than the last one. So overall, it seems to be looking higher. Then do note, today crude oil inventories will be out. And of course, if let's say the inventory is much, much higher, like 2 million, 3 million surplus, then I think that will drive crude oil price even lower. Yeah. All right. So what happened last night? Why is the market behaving in such a crazy manner itself? Now, last night itself, the Dow Jones lost another 650 points. Now, initially, the market did actually almost recover. Then after that, it paid, gave way because the selling kicked in. Then, of course, when Jerome Powell came in to talk further, that drive the market all the way down itself. Now, at the lower end, the market did try to recover, but towards the last two hours, the selling resumed. Now, this is a pretty clear cut. The market still wants to sell. Now, of course, we do know that many fund managers, hedge fund managers, analysts, strategies, all came in to call for buy yesterday, that is, the day before. And the Dow Jones recovered, right? 300 points. But the thing is this, the market has lost 900 points. Then it recovered 300 points. And today, this morning, it lost 600 points. So it means that now whatever profits that were made yesterday, the day before, sorry, is already being taken out. So that means why, that's why I say that there is a possibility to see a little bit more selling before we can get to see a bottom temporarily. All right. So I'll share with you more in details in the technical point, but let's look at the um, this CNBC uh, market correspondence sharing. So they say that the Dow dropped by 650 points on growing Omicron fears and Jerome Power paper comment. So of course, Moderna CEO, right? He is the one that come in and spoke the market first, okay? When he says that Moderna may not have the, need more time in short to get the vaccine straight away, the market shaken because initially people saying that, okay, it should be straight the apart. They should be able to get it done. But when the CEO himself say, maybe not, that brings the market down. So there were three big things that bring the market down yesterday. So first of all, the one that really drive the market down was John Powell saying about the speeding of the bond buying, tapering. And of course, we saw that, uh, we also saw that Moderna CEO says that, right, the expecting the current vaccine is not to be less effective towards the new variant. So that's why market got a bit shaken. And of course, we also have uh, this point whereby the, the thing is this, people who are more bullish say that, look, the rally is just only the, the, the selling, actually, it's just temporarily because the symptoms seem to be mild. And of course, Moderna, this news itself right, is a little bit uh, interesting. Yeah, you know my word, interesting. So they still think that doesn't matter. And our day is that this should be okay. Now, I did some research on this so-called uh, Omicron, uh, this, uh, Omicron uh, virus. And I can tell you this, something is very suspicious here. So in terms of the number of people getting affected, right? I'll show you the, the article very shortly. And of course, that drive the yield down further. Now, the yield, we know that it's actually a very good gauge for the current inflation. But I was looking at 1.8%. But the thing is this, the market now drive it down to 1.45% because now they're saying that because of the, of the so-called um, this economy slowing down, hence therefore, right? People are buying more bonds. A big question mark is uh, if the economy is not doing well itself, right? Why would people not buy bonds at a price of the, the yield at 1.4%? 
because the inflation is so very 3% to 5% per year. To spend money and put into bond market for 1.4%, does it make any sense to you? To me, it doesn't make any logical sense. Other than unless you're telling me you are expecting the market to really, really sell down bigger than expected, then of course, if your market is going to be negative, then of course you buy a 1% or 2%, 1%, you know, 1% gain is better than negative growth. You understand my point? But the question is this, do you think so? Do you think the stock market itself will come out negative growth? I, I don't buy that. So I'm going to tell you this, I don't buy a lot of stuff, what's happening right now. And that's why I say this, right? Be very careful over the next two weeks, the market may go into a crazy movement, yeah? Okay, so with that, so let's revisit what happened yesterday. Okay, now yesterday when the market opens here, we thought the market will be going up. And I thought that so because it was above or pivot one, right? So by right, above pivot one should buy. But because we have this, guys, I told you before that the KSI is red and it's an uptick rate. That means the selling pressure of yesterday. Now, the market actually went up yesterday. You see that the market was up yesterday or the day before, sorry, keep on saying that. The market was up the day before. So the thing is this, a lot of people will want to buy, but actually to us TWB student, we know that this is actually a sell because the KSI uptick rate means the selling actually increased. So yes, the market did go up on the Monday. Yeah, if you understand this, but it did not has the, what you call buyers coming in. The buyer should be green, not red. So we know that something is very wrong. That means someone is actually pumping up the market and then they're not actually going to push the market. So when the market loses OP, I tell you guys, be very careful. And of course, when the market came down, now we told you before, right, the market has the MLP and the uh, MA200 very close by. And I told you that if the market is to come down, they will go towards that. Remember, for those who remember that, right, please put the word REM, remember, because I told you guys, that when they when numbers stack together, right, usually become like an attraction, it will go towards that. And of course, I did say this, if the market really break 34,845, right? I tell you that the market will drop even further and the number I gave was 34,591. So that means that when the market break 34,845, I know that the market may break down another 200 points. And of course, if the market behave according to plan, yes, indeed. The market really, really, I mean, uh, really move according to what I shared and went lower. So now you understand why it's all right. The KSI is so powerful. To a lot of people, they find KSI is a bit redundant. They find it not user friendly. They find it that it's hard to understand. But after a while later, if you really put your time and so into it, it's all right. You will see the impact of it. So of course, let's see the Dow Jones intraday to get a better idea. So the market was ding dong at the opening price. Then of course the news came out from Moderna. And then boom, boom. Now, when the market breaks MLP, we know that it will go down lower. And true be told, it came down to pivot one. Now, at pivot one, you can see really it stopped there and rebounded. But the selling came in again, and that pushed down the market all the way to the low level. Now, what is scary is that after the market tried to rebound, it failed, right? But then look at this, guys. Look at this. The KSI jump. KSI jump means that boys are actually buying now it's a contrary of here itself look at it the voice here itself has a ksi jump and it's selling that means the selling pressure came in about one and a half hour before the market sells so once again you see the ksi jump is over here the market have every bus 15 minutes the market have about 45 minutes to one hour time to call for it that means that we already know there's a ksi jump and of course, we already had this information before the market sell off. And of course, when the market do a KSI jump to buy, this was where the market went sideways for again one hour, then the Dow Jones go up. Don't you realize that this is a very convenient to, to use? And now understand why it's all right. As long as you understand how to use a TWB system, you can actually make a good deal of money. I'm not kidding you guys. Every morning I'm doing MAO. I'm just going to tell you this. I know whether the system works best or not, all right? Because if not, I won't be doing this so regularly every single day and do it live. That is the scary part. To do live itself, which whatever you say, people take note of it. People check your data, check your videos, whatever you say. And of course, if you keep on getting it wrong, who the hell will stay with you, right? Think about this. Now, for Go itself, right, was actually very sad. Now, Go actually opens here, but we all know that Go could be going up because stock market is coming down. So gold actually went up, and I say that gold will go up to 1797. Remember, now gold was trading at 1774. I say that gold will go up. Remember, I say that gold will go up. Right, sorry, opening price of 1783. Sorry, the opening price of 1783. 
And I say that gold will go up to 1797. Remember, I say that it will go up because why the MA200 is there. And when the market breaks above 1786 with the MLP, it confirms it better, all right? The thing is this, but I did warn you guys, KSI is actually red in color. I also warn you that, right, KSI is red and it's uptick. Please take profit. Remember that I say, please take your profit. Remember that. Those who remember that, it's all right. Remember go, right? They'll keep remember go, all right? I came in to tell you guys when the goal was trading at 1797, I will say, guys, do take profit. Then went to 1800, 1802, 1803, 1804. Now, you keep on climbing, right? But remember, I keep on saying this, guys, it's good to take profit, okay? Just to make sure that I don't lie to you. You can see right here now, guys, this is what I posted in our gold group chat. That was here whereby when the gold price hit KTR plus three, where Susan informed us that market hit KTR plus three. So what did I did? I said that, okay, we have to be very careful because it is good, but we should take profit right now in SWL. And the time was about 1 p.m. In, in the afternoon. So the market hit almost 1809. And then when one market hit about one that level 1808, then it started to collapse down, yeah? So this shows you that I was pretty clear that when you look for buy, I will call for buy because if you look at the drawing again, if you just screen up over here, you can see that we were people basically buying in the morning itself, right? Early in the morning, we call for buy already. And then after that itself, right? The gold price really, really shoot up. Yeah. So you can you can see that this is really, really incredible. Yeah. Okay. So this is more this afternoon already. Let me just bring you the morning call. So we had that itself. Yep. Okay. I give I inform you guys that there should be more upside coming in, and Susan confirmed it and said that it will go higher. And of course, Susan gave a very detailed sharing, say that gold price now has a long setup. It's a color change with BNB and KSI, no blue bar, and all the pivot one and KTR plus two stacks. Everything was informed. And of course, gold kept on going higher. I, I even draw this for you, right? 1797. It should be going there itself. So all these. Are made available for people who are online with us. Yeah. So all these information, you can't lie about it because it's all made available and we do not delete them. And of course, what did go do? We can take a look as a form of reference. So go was basically um folding around this area, but once it crossed the MLP, which is 1786, it started to move higher, right? Then after that, it hit the point, the 1797 level, which happened to be three of them: the KTR, the MA, and the pivot. So when it hit the 1797, don't you notice what happened? The market straight away came down as if that the market know that we are all there. So when the market hit this point, all of us took our profit and we all make money. And then after that itself, it stabilized for a while, it goes up again. But when it hit this point, it hit the KTR plus three, we already warned you guys something is not too correct. Remember the KSI was actually uh, red in color uptick. So we say, guys, Time to take profit. And of course, what happened? Wow, look at gold. It slammed down from the high of 1805, went all the way down to 1772. So again, all these really show by itself. And we can we basically do it uh, live in person. And of course, people make money, all right? So for people who make money yesterday from gold, please keep the word gold. If you have made money from gold, all right, please keep the word gold, all right? I want to see how many of you have made money from gold um, the yesterday, so you made money from gold. Please keep the word made from gold or you put gold. I want to see that you guys make money, okay? Now, making money, you must learn to share and inform people, right? So, let me see how many of you make money. Yeah, so Chongming say naughty go. Yes, go was a bit naughty yesterday, indeed. Thank you very much, Susan, Terry, Chongming, for saying that. Anybody else make money other than Terry? All right, go was pretty simple for trading, right? Yep, indeed. Okay, so that was what happened to go yesterday. So let's look at some of the local and global news right now. Now, Dr. Fauci says that Omicron COVID covariant has already been found in 20 countries, okay? But not yet in the US. Now, the thing is this, think about this, guys, before I show you the article. COVID, I mean, this uh, Omicron COVID variant has been found in 20 countries, but not in US. So initially, I, my first thought is that there will be hundreds to thousands of people already infected by the virus, right? So what do you think is the answer? Guys, what do you think? Out of 20 countries, okay, in a total of 20 countries, how many people do you think have actually 
got the Omicron virus? Please key your answer right now. We got no price for this, but I just want to ask you now, if I'll tell you now, Dr. Fauci tells you that 20 countries have people receive, uh, that get unfortunately got the, this, um, this variant, right? How many people do you think is suffering right now? Please key your answer, 20 countries. I was shocked when I saw the number. And after that, I double look again and I realized that, wow, this is incredible. Come on guys, key your number right now. There are 25 of you right now. I want to see your numbers. Let's do it. Twenty countries, and uh, all the media talk non-stop on this. And Singapore also stop people from coming in. Japan stop the borders, and of course, US also stop their borders. So many things happen. All right. So how many people you think that got the virus? Okay. So we saw from Anthony, two hundred thousand. Then is three thousand five hundred only. Noel, 100,000, okay? Everybody look at this report, okay? I almost fell off my chair, literally. Now, White House Chief Medical Advisor, Dr. Fauci, says that 226 cases, oh my goodness. <laughs> Gosh, 226 cases, okay, of the highly mutated Omicron, Omicron COVID case uh, variant has been detected across 20 countries, okay? Oh my goodness, 226. Am I getting it wrong somewhere as well? So my point is this, it is because of a virus that is supposed to spread very fast, like, whoa, crazy, crazy, and yet only 226 cases. Is it because I'm getting it wrong or because they just said these are the special one, they get a higher level one? You know, when I see this, it's all, I really don't know what to say. So, of course, you see this as well, right? The thing is this, but then on the other side, you look at Moderna, uh, CEO said that the flight from Amsterdam, from South Africa, 61 of them has tested with COVID, but then only 14 of them has the Omicron virus. Can you understand my point now? <laughs> okay, so the COVID case is still there. But the, 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 the thing is this, the virus itself is that the one that is going crazy and creating a stock market coming down itself is only 226 people. I think probably a hospital in Singapore probably seen more patients than this from 20 countries. I mean, this is really not stuff. So I tell you this, my honest opinion. When I see this itself, right, I can tell you this, this selling itself, right, it's gonna be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's just making mountains out of molehill. You think about that, it's really crazy. So now the thing is this, why people initially thought that the virus would be called new? Yeah, because you can see right, initially when the virus came out, right, everybody thought that the name would be known as NU, new. And of course, some of the um, media correspondents also call it new, right, NU. But then this is the reason. Now, everybody take a look at the reason right now. Take a look. Now, we all know that initially the virus was called alpha, then beta, then gamma, then delta, right? The delta was a bit more popular one. Then uh, Epsilon, Zelda, all this was not really mentioned because there was all, these are the much more um, feasible ones. Then of course, then we come to the B11529, which is the current one. Then the problem is this, they're supposed to be new and you, right? But why? Because apparently the next one is XI. Oh my goodness. This is the next one. It's based on Greek alphabet. So if they were to do this itself, right, after the MU virus, the next one should be NU virus. But apparently they skipped that and they didn't want to talk about this one. So they straight away do the Omicron. <laughs> oh my goodness, really. The next one is Omicron and then it's Pi and Dofo and eventually ended with Omega. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now you understand why it's all right. This is obviously, we all know that what is happening. Your WHO is how you must understand who sponsor most money to them. So obviously they also notice that the next the next alphabet is all right. It's not going to be a very nice name to be used, especially they know that who is your 
<laughs> sponsor, right? So really, I when I see this, I was laughing away. Say, oh, okay, mm, okay. Sometimes in life, you just have to do something to protect your interests. Yeah, okay. So understand why it's Omicron and not Nu. All right, this is why it is so. Okay, then actually it will be called, it would not be called XI. That is for sure. Okay, pretty cool, huh? All right. So what are the important information for us today to take note of? Please take note now. Yeah. Okay, a minute. Okay, there are some important market information to share with you right now. Let's take a look. Now, first of all, Jerome Powell says that Federal Reserve will discuss speeding up the bond buying taper at December meeting. So I can tell you this, since Jerome Powell said this, I can tell you that he will definitely increase it. Because when Jerome Powell says something, you notice that when he says something himself, he mean it and he makes sure he gets it done. He says that okay, he plays very safe and he always gives what I call Preem, but this time around he didn't preempt the market by saying about this, about this cockishness. So the market got caught off guard. Now he's telling you, I will discuss, and likely it will go through because a lot of the Federal Reserve uh, officials, at least five of them, I know in based on what I'm seeing and reports, already wanted him to do that. So now he already turned hawkish in a way. So obviously it's not right. It will carry on. So which means that 15, 14, 15 December, very high chance the word transitory will be taken away for the minutes. And most important, it will likely increase its reduction to 30 billion. Yes, it will do that. And of course, but they will leave a bit of back door and say, okay, if only when we will look at it still closely and if things needed, then they'll do this and do that. But I can say that 99%, in my opinion, it's all right. It will definitely be an increment in the uh, reductions level. Okay, so watch out for this 14, 15 December. Because why? Because Yellen came in. Now, Yellen have been quiet recently, and I said that you hope you'll come out sooner or later. So Yellen warns failure to deal with debt limit. Because don't forget, the debt ceiling was pushed back. Remember, it was in October. Then it was pushed back to which date? Yes, 15 December. It was pushed back to 15 December. So which means that, right, the market actually pushed back this entire thing itself back to the time where FOMC is going to happen. So the thing is this, this is going to, be going to create a bit of drama here because Congress now is the dramatic December and there's dramatic, uh, drastic deadline to do. So now take note, 15 December. Now 14 December is the FOMC meeting, 15 December is where they come out. And then of course we have the debt ceiling. So this is going to be a very, very crazy period. Okay, now why I keep on seeing the word crazy period because I want you to think out a very important point, everybody. Because I want to tell you this, okay, that I mean, I say that this uh, Treasury Secretary says that the government has to has the money to cover its expenses until 15 December. So, which means that either the Congress is going to give more money or not itself, right? Something must be done. And of course, this debt ceiling battle is always the Wayang show that's ongoing right now, right? But allow me to say this because they keep on saying that if this doesn't get it done, it will lead to a catastrophic uh, economic consequences and stuff like that. But then again, like I say, when our market say that this will happen itself, usually the opposite will might be happening. But prior to that itself, right, something may happen. So what am I trying to rattle on? Look at this, guys. Now, on the 24th of November, during, I mean, about two, one week ago exactly, I did a special Zoom session. And I said that based on my personal forecast for the Dow Jones for the next three months, I forecasted that November will drop. And it will start to drop. And it really happened. Then I say that December, the first week will still drop and it's actually happening right now. So only until mid week or mid month, sorry, mid month, that's right, it should be mid month, yeah, not mid week, mid month, I'm sorry. Yeah, typo error. Mid month, then my forecast says that it will go up. So mid month, isn't it basically this 15 December? <laughs> Interesting, right? Now, I have no idea that this is the, the depth ceiling. I have no idea. I'm doing this because I'm based on seasonal pattern and I do a lot of research, a lot of reading, and then I come up with this idea. So now it makes a lot of sense that maybe, maybe the market may want to come down all the way until 14, 15 of December. Then, of course, when, when, when the facts turns to, when the all this, all this rumor turns to a fact, then what happened? They may do something during this period of time, then the stock market may recover. So which means that I kind of believe that right from now till maybe 13, 14 November, uh, December, sorry, from now to 13 to 15 December, market may gradually go down a bit more. 
And then after that, around mid-month, you'll find a base and that is where the market will recover. And then after that, it should recover quite substantially from the low itself. So that's why I felt that the market could be a good time to buy during the mid of the month, all right? But of course, prior to that itself, there could be some selling, could be some profit taking that you need to take note, okay? So if everybody clear of what I just shared, please key number one right now. If you understand what am I sharing here itself, you understand where I'm coming from, please key number one, yeah? Okay, please key number one. Now, this forecast is, was done during the 24th of November event, whereby I predicted the, um, the market itself. And I said that what happened, that was a preview in fact. And I think there's some of you guys remember that I, I said this. If you forget, you can just look at your screenshot. I'm sure some of you have taken some screenshot back then. So I didn't change anything other than the typo error there itself. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank you for the number ones. All right, so the Turkish Lira slides to fresh record low as President uh, Erdogan says that double down on rate policy. So the thing is, is the Lira is a very clear cut picture of what can happen to a currency, okay? It has plummeted from 8.5 to the dollar to now 13, so double, all right? So he says this, I have never advocated and will be, won't be advocating for interest rate increment. Now to him himself, right, raising interest rate will not, bring down inflation. And that's why now, because of he doesn't want to increase interest rate, the lira is coming down very fast. He refused to increase interest rate because he knows that this will not help. And because now the inflation in this um, Turkey is into double digit already. So that's why a lot of people is forcing him to make this move. But I say no, because we also seen that before in 1992, it actually happened to pound. When pound inflation was going up itself, right? The chancellor actually did that, and that causes the pound to plummet even worse, even though there was an increment of interest rate back then, where George Soros made one billion dollars from it. So I understand where you're coming from because it does seems it does make sense that actually, right, lowering interest rate uh, or raising trade will not really help inflation. So what the thing is is he actually fired three central bank chief no for not aligning with his belief. You understand my point? He fired three expert. Yeah as a president, to, to stay on to his belief. So now that is where it gets a bit confused already, right? So who will dare to work for him unless really follow what he says? Uh? But economic 101, we all know that you need to hike interest rate to combat inflation. This is what is happening now in US. But in reality term, you can see that it's not happening now in for Turkey. So don't you understand why it's not, right? It's really very interesting. You can have the same, you can come from the same university, but you have two different teaching and it can be used two different teaching at different times. So it's pretty cool. So of course it's all right. On another flip note, it's all right. Yesterday, one of the one of the highlight is that Apple share is quite cute. Okay, oh, I say cute because why? The entire market itself has fell very badly, but Apple share actually stayed up. So that means that this Apple share do have some some power here itself. So the thing is this: it seems that some people are saying that okay, since that, that all these technology companies gonna get hit, right? Then we will find a better company that won't be hit by the interest rate factor here itself. So let's go to find this company called Apple because Apple has so much money as in cash. So they believe that Apple also has no new product and the stock price is still down there. So which means that if ever later on there's any new powerful product comes in, Apple will become very valuable. Apple shares will go up and the value of the company will go higher. So everybody decided that, you know what, let's dump this and buy a new Apple. So it was pretty clear. So what I'm trying to say is this, if this maintain, then yes, if the market ever pull back further, then of course, it will be a good idea to buy more Apple. You understand? It's good to buy more Apple because this will give you a good idea that Apple shares will be, is a good buy. So we have so many people buying. And of course, when the market down with 600 points, and yet you can see that Apple share actually ended positive. It's a very, very important highlight, yeah? So take note of Apple. So let's see whether uh, Warren Buffer and friends, when they sell Apple, it's all right, they're getting wrong. So for Santoli, it's all right, he basically, uh, share his his view, and he was very it's an unexpected hawkish view from Federal Reserve, and he says that right now the thing is this the S and P so make it faster a little bit. 
Now that's MP moving average, 50 days moving average versus a 20 days. So obviously the 20 days has broken down. That's why the market has some selling according to him. But he felt that the 50 day moving average should be able to hold. So the S&P should be able to hold at 45.30. Now the S&P now is trading at 46. Uh, 46, what's the price now? S&P now trading at 4,600 level, like, yeah. So the thing is this, he's saying that as long as the market can stay above the 45, 35 level, it should be still safe, yeah. This is quite possible. And I also think that that could be very possible. So traders, watch out for this level, yeah, okay. So thing is this now, he added on, he said that now Jerome Powell is more free to react because now he's confirmed his position. And of course, it's very sad that it was, it's very interesting to see this hawkish move from Barry Reserve. And of course, he, he must remember what happened in 2018, whereby you have this uh, the tapering concern. And of course, now the, the other thing is a global reacceleration re of growth is coming in. And of course, inflation is going up. So that's why they have to really, you know, take both sides of the coin. Still, end of the day, yesterday, we saw that many shares are uh, coming off. And of course, the 92% of the NYSE volume will decline and 90% skew on Friday. That means that there's a lot of selling across the board on Friday and yesterday market. So why they're selling? Because obviously that's offloading. So whether or not will it be actually a sign of further downside, right? We won't know this, but the VIX itself is at 27 right now. It was much lower, right? It was 16 at the point, but do not, this is uh, this VIX is spot market, uh, not the SCFD, yeah? So what happened is that so now the VIX is going higher. Now we know that on average itself, VIX will hit a certain point, then it will stop and usually that's where the stock market recover. So stay tuned later on for my last part itself. So in case you get to freak out, don't worry, my friends, don't worry because you can see that Goldman Sachs is still very bullish. They are looking at 5,100 by 2022, BNB Paribas 5,001, JP Morgan 5050. But of course the one that's very bearish is actually Morgan Stanley, Mike Wilson. He says that no, no, no. 2022, still my view is 4,400. Now it was 4,000 at once at, at a low level, but now obviously he's wrong. So now he had to adjust, but he still believed that it could be 4,400. So do not now S&P 500 now is trading at about 4,600. So that means that, okay, now it's 4,600 as currently right now, which is here. That means that only Bank of America and Morgan Stanley are actually the one that is following. Is what is that mean? Their forecast about same now, but other other of them from UBS all the way to Goldman Sachs, all of them are looking at much higher level because now it's four thousand six. So it means that right, if the market really go down next year, all these guys will get it wrong. Well, only two individuals get it right. So what do you think? Who will be correct? The bigger, the majority or the minority. So this can be interesting though. Now, my personal view is this. I think that the market will go down a bit more from where we are now. Then after that, it may recover. My, my, my view is this. Hitting 5,000 next year should be uh, really possible. But, but I will say this again, but that will be all. I don't think 5,100 5, will be there. 5,000 will reach by end of next year. Uh, end of next year, that should be possible. Yeah, end of next year. Okay, so that is what we have for the uh, bullishness. So of course, every morning itself, whenever I do an MAO, I will do this for you guys. I'll do market news and update through our channel. If you want to know this news, then watch out for there. Contact Susan for this, okay? Now, the thing is this, something that I want you to take note of this little slide here itself is very important. Now, remember that when the time itself about a month ago, and I told you that, uh, uh, when I told you that this uh, fear and greed indicator right now, do not, okay, let's show you a little bit. Huh? On this day, 16th of December, that was actually here itself, 16. Okay, yeah, uh, one, one month ago, it was one month ago, it was uh, here at 72. So the time when the market was doing here, it was at 72. Then after that, it went all the way higher itself, it hit the high of 86 for the fear and greed in the indicator. Then of course, from that itself, right, on the 16, which is here, it came down to about 82, as you can see right now, 82. And then after that, what happened? The market came all the way crashing down, okay, as of this morning. So now it's trading at 727. Now it's 277. What do you think? Yes, I do believe that there could be a intermittent recovery in the near term. But of course, if the market can drive down a bit more, then this will be a better buy, yeah? So that's why I say this, 
to have the fear and greed indicator will play a good part for this. So when the market was at 86, I said, Kimo warning you guys to take profit from the market, but people say, no, you go higher and stuff like that. And of course the market knows how to pay a great deal for you. So now let's take a look at the numbers, everybody. This is cool. You can see that, right? Whenever the last time it hit below uh, 13, I mean about 11 to 12 is the best buy, yeah? So if any time, if the index for this fear and greed index go down to 11 or 12, it will be a very solid buy. And that's whereby I'm looking to buy a bit more than normal. But of course, in the usual ground, it's about 20 to 21, all right? So that was where it happened before and the market rebounded. So now we are 27, right? So we should see a little bit more for it to hit this point, 2021. But of course, if the market go drastic, then 11 and 12 will be a very good time to buy into the equity market. So that is where, when people is fearful, you go greedy. When people is greedy, you go fearful. So when people are greedy over here, you have to be very fearful, right? So when people now is very fearful later on, you should be very greedy. You got my point? That's how it works over here itself. So hopefully, you like this sharing today. Today's MAO itself is really information packed. I've done a lot of things for you. I really hope you like it. All right, if you like this, this sharing here itself, please key the word L-I-K-E, like, okay? If you like my sharing today, please key the word L-I-K-E, like, and give me all the love and the likes, okay? Give me all the love, like, care. Yeah, love, like, care. That's all I need from you guys. It's not easy to wake up every morning at 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. to just prepare all this for you guys. And of course, you can see I don't pick up from the CNBC and then rattle on stock. I actually took out a lot, a lot of stuff from different areas and share things with you as well because I really want you guys to get the best of it. I know that today's MAO is a bit longer than usual, but because there's so many important information, I just want you guys to benefit from it, okay? Of course, again, if you don't like what I share, I apologize for that. I, I can't find a better way to make you happier. So all I say is I apologize, okay? So sorry for that, yeah? To make your day start with a bad one. Okay, so now I finished the main G's itself. Let's go into the charts. I know I've been waiting for this for a long while. Let's go with the charts, shall we? The bull goes moo, the bear goes drew, and the lemon go is different this time. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go first. So China market. Now China market, this morning, as you can see on your screen right now, this morning, China market did open slightly higher and then traded the MLP, but it's still below the MA30 and MA200, you can see very clearly. And therefore now it's going back to the opening price. So I still stand my ground on this. I still believe that China market will still go down the next two weeks, okay? I know that by saying this is like not very nice, but we have to be objective. Now, why do I say that? I don't think that we can solve the problem from this evergreen. So I believe that there will be selling and there will be a gap. There's a gap here as well. I believe that the gap will be covered. It was covered back then over here already, but I believe that this is going to be an empty space for the market to go down. 14,977 is still my level for buying into China A50. So traders, watch out for that. That's my view for China, yeah? Okay, so that is China. Let's look at Hong Kong today right now. Now today, this morning, Hong Kong is beautiful. Oh my goodness, look at it. It's so beautiful, guys. Hong Kong this morning was a buy. I repeat, was a buy. First of all, the opening price was already above pivot one. So above OP, above pivot one is a buy, right? That's the first thing first. Then what happened? The market actually came down and then look at it. The low of the day, the low of the day, open high low. The low of the day is 23,435. Wow, it misses the pivot one by a 10 hour point and then recovers. Now, yesterday, the KSI was green. The KSI was green, okay? It was green, though it's down tick, but it was green. So it was a buy day today. So it mean, when the Hang Seng goes above OP, it was a buy. You don't need to ask me. And we know that you will go to the MLP first because that's the nearest number it has. And now you see the Hang Seng now is at 23,749. So you can see how we can trade the market. You just have to know what to do and then follow the numbers, yeah? I believe my students from Hang Seng Group should be making a bit of money, right? Wow, look at it, Hang Seng, right? The moment it opens, it was already a CCRY, CCRY. It was already a great to yellow buy. And of course, Hang Seng went all the way up itself. Once it crossed MLP at 23,600, it went all the way up. So again and again, this speaks volume on how we trade the market. You really need to follow the rules and the guidance. So people tell you, hey, Dow Jones is down by 
600 points. A lot of people will say sell, right? But not us. We follow the market. So we follow the rules. The rules say buy, we just buy. So the market goes above OP only, we just stick to the buy side, okay? We just have to stick to the buy side and the market really accelerated all the way here. So, so congratulations to people who actually follow the rules. This is how we make money from the market, yeah? So once again, congratulations to people, okay? Hold on a minute, just give me a moment. I have some incoming text messages coming in. I need to software this for a while. Just give me a short moment, yeah? Okay, so you see that this is how the Hang Seng went up all the way. Beautiful, right? So imagine, yes, imagine I call you up this morning and you tell you, hey, Dow Jones down 600 points. What do you think in the mind? You will tell me that it will also be a sell, right? No one will tell me, hey, Hang Seng is a buy today. But the system, when it opened this morning and it's above pivot one and sell, right? Don't you find it very interesting? How can a market open above pivot one when the market is down 600 points? And of course, what happened? You can see that really classic. This is a classic buy itself. And that's why people who doesn't know, they won't know what to do and they won't know that the KSI turned green yesterday. So that means that today is a buying day. Quite incredible, right? Just a simple color itself, you know what to do already, yeah? Okay, Dow Jones, okay. Now Dow Jones also performed some magic this morning. I can see that already happening. Right, this morning Dow Jones opened first and he purposely went down, opening just here, he purposely went down towards pivot one. Pivot one, trigger, and then recover. So what happened it is a, it touches a pivot one and recover. So when go above OP, it's a buy. So now the Dow Jones is a buy also. That means that as long as the Dow Jones stays above OP, it will be a buy. As long as Dow Jones stays above OP, it will be a buy. So let's take a look now. You can see that the market on a 15 minute chart opens here, came down and then ding dong, ding dong at the pivot one beautifully. Now all these numbers are all already fully automated, right? For you. And of course this is a BNB. So BMB followed by a CCRY and trigger pivot one, confirm buyer, no need to see one. So you see that again, very simple. You just have to follow rules. You don't need to think so much. See the market, trade the market, make the money, right? And you can see from the bottom of the screen, the market will buy. Now, of course, at this moment now, it's a buy. Can it change later? It is possible to change, but at least for now, it's a buy, okay? I repeat, at least for now, it's a buy. So let's see for the Dow Jones, how high can it go? Well. If it really goes up, it can go all the way to this point, 34,873, because that's an MLP. Now, of course, if it fail and if it start to go back down below OP, be careful. 34,465 is a very important support. Yeah, it cannot lose it. Now, if it loses it, then it will go down to this point here rather easily, 34,364. So my view is very simple. If it goes up 873, downside 3364. Yeah, so these numbers, take note of that. You can think of these two numbers, yeah? Okay, so that is Dow Jones. Let's look at the NASDAQ, shall we? Now the NASDAQ, well, we have an interesting zebra formation, a zebra formation, yeah? Red, yellow, red, yellow. So that means that the zebra could either be a big upside from here or a downside of here, all right? So do your numbers, guys. You should know what I'm saying yourself, okay? So the thing is this, we're supposed to have a CCYR on the... NASDAQ this morning, but the market, you can see almost immediately recovered from there. And of course, you can see that the market now has went down to the MA30, 16,246. And then once it touches it, it's rebounding as you can see now, and likely it's going to challenge the MLP, which is at 16,340. So if the market basically can cross 340, it can go all the way higher to 16,428. Yeah. So the thing is this, the KSI is green as the KSI jump. So which means that today there could be some buying interest again. So today could be some buying interest for the NASDAQ. So again, that probably reason why the Hang Seng today is trading higher right now because Hang Seng and NASDAQ is pretty closely needed, yeah? S&P 500 this morning went on to 45.77. And then again, same thing again for the third day in a row, the opening price is above pivot one and logically above OP is a buy. So the opening price is 45.94. So which means that if the market stays above OP, it will be a buy this morning. 
And of course, now you can see the same thing happening across the board. This is opening price. It went down, triggered KPR minus one very nicely from a BNB, and then now it's going up already. Okay. So again, this shows element of why you should believe in the TWB system than try to speculate it. So of course, the thing that I remind you guys is the KSI remain red in color. So the upside will be limited. So I think the upside will be only until 46, 29 then it may come down. But of course, if anything happened with the COVID cases and stuff and the market breaks OP, it may come down, but I think it's near the range of support. So 45, 40 to 45, 58, maybe the range for support for SMP in the near term, yeah? So traders kindly take note of that, yeah? Okay, so that's SMP 500 down the Nikkei. I already tell you guys, it will plunge. It really came down. This morning, Nikkei did the same thing again, the opening price was here and it triggered a pivot. So it came down, recover above pivot. Now above OP, above pivot one, it's a buy, right? Above OP, above pivot one, it's a buy. And of course, did the Nikkei do, up, do the same thing? Yes, the Nikkei did the same thing. The Nikkei opening price is here. It went up, break down, break down, break down, couldn't stay down and up. Now it's going up already. So as long as you know it's yellow color, it's above OP, it's above pivot one, we know that it's always a buy day, yeah? It's a very simple thing that we have created for our TLBB student. And as long as they know the rules, they can be able to engage without a problem. So that's Nikkei. Now for DEX itself, we already tell you DEX for the day chart itself, right? DEX itself is going to cover gap. And yesterday the gap was covered by DEX beautifully. So for me, DEX itself, right? Same thing this morning, likely it will be gap up and whether it will go higher or not, we won't know, but 15,388 is the MLP, right? 15,388 is MLP. So that will be the level that I think the index will be going to test it. But if you fail and come down, the selling should bring, should bring it down back to 15,032. And that's about all about thing for DEX, yeah, for the time being. All right, so we have covered the market itself, all the indices that look at the crude oil market. Now, crude oil today, this morning, has recovered from the low of $66. It's bound back up to $67. Now, the thing is this, if you look at the, if you take away all the lines and stuff like that, let me just take this off. These are all the online ID yesterday. Okay, so what happened now? This morning, the crude oil opening price is actually between the two pivot, right? But the KSI is red, but it's down tick. So which means that the selling is there, but not as strong anymore. So that means that if the market goes up, right? It will go to $68.36 because that is the MLP. Yeah, watch out for this $68.36. I cannot believe that the market may test it later. Yeah, you may purposely test it later. Now, once again, when the market sells down too much itself, right? Usually we do see such a market will recover. But of course, you had to stay on strong before the end day ended. Yeah. Now, for gold itself, right? Let's take a look at gold. Now, gold, we are having a very incredible movement here. We have a new BMB yesterday. I repeat a new BNB yesterday. So which means that the upside can be as high as 1847 and the downside can be as low as 1731. Okay, obviously um, the market basically stays around the area. So not to be worried about, but of course, if the market breaks 1778.89, it should go back higher already. But of course, vice versa, if the market breaks down later, if it goes down below uh, 1770, it may have to go down all the way so this point here itself, and that would be one seven. Oh yeah, one seven three one is it? Uh, one seven three one level. Yeah, for this uh goal. Yeah. So for me today, go the KSI is red, down tick, KCS is blinking. So we just wait for the buy signal if it's possible. If not, short signal when it go higher. All right. Buy signal must buy it from the low end, that'd be better. But today it's not the best day to buy, yeah, because the market, all of them are go all against you right now. So it's not the best deal yet. Okay, last one will be silver. You can see on silver, it has tried to recover yesterday, but again, it tapered off because of the news from the Federal Reserve and it created a doji yesterday. And I told you for silver, I'm not keen to buy too many now unless it dropped down below to $22.50. You can try over there. Yeah, 2050, then we can see a look because that is where the technical point is when I was being trained. Yeah, so watch out for this. KSI is still red in color, but KCX is there. So that means that the downside will be limited. So a bit of pullback more should be able to move the market. Yeah. Okay, so that is the big, uh, the gold and commodities like crude oil, gold, and silver. 
Let's look at yesterday. Now, yesterday I missed out Bitcoin. I apologize on that. Now, Bitcoin again has tried to go up to about 59,000 yesterday. Then after that, it basically fizzled out now. It's back to 56,000. And I'm going to still stick to my ground. I still think that you go down to 54,000 first before we can see any, any uh, movement here. So, yeah. In terms of KSI reading, you can see that the Bitcoin still got a lot of buyers coming in, but the price is not following through. Hence, therefore, this is very true that the market could be selling more in the market. Huh? So watch out for this. 54,000 is still my personal target for Bitcoin to buy or to watch out at. Okay, then we have um, Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is trying to gear itself higher because it seemed to be a greater demand. So yesterday, Ethereum, right, I expected it to fall, but it didn't, so I was wrong. And then from there itself, right, it rattled on further to now at 46, 74, which is very, very near to uh, the previous high. And I think that it will likely trigger it. But of course, this, this uh, Ethereum itself is buying on more of the program sector, and a lot of people have been playing the game. So all I can say is this, based on what I'm seeing around, the boys are buying, there's no blue bars. Yes, Ethereum do has a possibility to go up to 4,800 this year, if I say things all go well, yeah? Of course, this is really ending soon. I'm talking about next year. Uh, you should be able to go up to 4,800 rather easily for the first month of January. Okay, so guys, that is my view on Ethereum. So Ethereum and Bitcoin are a bit of different because I think that Ethereum is better. And we've been saying this for a long as well. I think Ethereum is much, much better than Bitcoin, yeah? Okay, all right. So thank you very much once again for this morning. Thank you. I apologize for stretching a bit longer than usual. But I hope that today MAO is a great deal for you. I know you can learn a lot of stuff and trade with care. I will see you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. This is Cal signing off. Bye-bye. Peace. Hey.